All right. Well, thank you to everyone. Uh, good morning and welcome to the Mark Allen Everett Skin of Color uh, Symposium. It is truly a pleasure uh, to be here and to present this wonderful symposium to you. This is actually the third year that um, we presented this. Um, and there was a year gap, uh, 2020 COVID uh, squashed our plans of in-person. Uh, we ended up just canceling that whole year, but um, it has grown ever since. And um, it actually started with in 2018 with about 65 people. And I'm understanding now that we have reached over 300 uh, registrants. And so we are excited about all of the things um, that this symposium will do around the nation for education uh, and discussion about skin of color issues. Um, I want to first, state that I am Dr. Pamela Allen. I am the chair and program director for the Department of Dermatology. And it has been um, a special interest of mine to elevate the uh, uh, subspecialty of dermatology known as uh, skin of color dermatology and an area of need in our educational um, uh, system within medical school, as well as our uh, residency programming. Um, I have nothing to disclose. This meeting is approved for eight AMA PRA category one credits, um, as well as 8.0 ANCC nursing contact hours and non-physician credit, which is accepted by most healthcare licensing and credentialing organizations. So in order to receive credit, please record your attendance by texting 11421 to 405-562-5828. And that should also be listed in your chat, but uh, you must, uh, for your CME credits and ANCC credits, text 11421 to 405-562-5828 and complete the evaluation. The evaluation at the end of the symposium must be completed to receive full credit. And then um, uh, you can get up, up on your cloud CME account and on the phone app at the end of the conference. And the code will also be posted um, through the continuous loop of the housekeeping slides that uh, will be throughout the day through the break times um, and will also be in the chat box. Uh, please open your chat box to post questions, view announcements and view questions that have been posted by others. And we invite you to join us on Twitter. Uh, we will be tweeting through the conference. And so also in the chat, you should see hashtag OU skin of color, hashtag OU SOCS or S-O-C-S, so that stands for Skin of Color Symposium, O-U-S-O-C-S 2022, and also hashtag OU Dermatology. So we uh, encourage all of our participants to actively tweet throughout the conference, um, talk about this, the presentations and things that you've learned, and uh, we appreciate that as well. Um, I want to let you know that uh, one of the uh, things and the vision of our um, Department of Dermatology here at University of Oklahoma is to become a nationally recognized uh, entity uh, for a skin of color center of excellence in the Southwest US for dermatologic care, research and education of skin of color. Also, we have a five-fold mission. First, we want to promote awareness of the unique features of skin of color. Secondly, we want to provide a forum of exchange of valuable information regarding ethnic skin. 
Number three, we want to educate healthcare providers, residents, fellows, students, estheticians, and hair care specialists. Yes, they too are invited to this symposium to discuss and, and, and really educate about dermatologic diseases in skin of color. Number four, we want to develop cultural competence as it relates to dermatology. And you know, as I continue to evolve through my journey of uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, um, I have uh, come to the, the, the appreciation that many, you know, we will never become completely competent. That means we have uh, taken a test and we can say that we're culturally competent uh, until next year, until that test is taken. And we know everything about uh, cultural comp, you know, uh, things. And I, and I wanna say that uh, I am a lifelong learner and to be continually culturally aware um, is probably where I want to be more so than competence. Uh, and, and, and there are some slight differences, but uh, it's important that we understand that overall um, uh, an, a, a multicultural environment affords um, ability to be successful in all that we strive to do within our educational systems. I want to also expose attendees to nationally recognized experts in dermatology. And so when we started in 2018, you will see the listing of uh, speakers that we had that year, um, quite robust. And then in 2019, um, our speakers that we had on varying subjects. And then last year, we had a plethora of uh, speakers as well, all across the nation and um, also a panel discussion was th then included last year and we will have another panel discussion this year. We want to especially acknowledge um, our largest donor and that is coming from the Everett Found uh, Family uh, Affiliated Fund of the Oklahoma City Community Foundation um, and Dr. Mark Allen Everett was uh, a, the chair of the department here. He also um, uh, is whom our current dermatology building is named after. He's quite a giant in the field of dermatology. He was president of uh, the uh, American um, uh, Dermatopathology Association and um, is someone who uh, loved the arts, was very uh, supportive of um, diversity and his legacy continues as his family uh, wanted to honor him in a way that would be long lasting in education of, of, of dermatology. And it's very befitting that he is uh, whom we have named uh, the Skin of Color Symposium after. We also want to acknowledge uh, several others, the OU College of Medicine Office of Diversity, Inclusion and Community Engagement, who has continued to, to support us in this endeavor. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Betty Pfefferbaum, a, a former chair of psychiatry here, uh, who is very supportive of our efforts here in this department and the Skin of Color Symposium. Uh, as well as her husband, former OU president, uh, Dr. Richard Van Horn. Um, Dr. Uh, Betty Pfefferbaum's twin sister, Rose Pfefferbaum. Dr. Rose Pfefferbaum is also um, a, a supporter and donor. So we are very happy and appreciative of their support of this symposium. So again, I wanna welcome you. I want you to absorb everything that uh, uh, we have to offer for you today. And I know that you are gonna be in for a, a special uh, uh, treat with the differing um, subjects that we have to cover today and all of the uh, special people that we have to present for you. So I am going to take down my screen 
And at this time, it is my true, true pleasure and honor uh, to introduce to everyone that is online the Executive Dean of the College of Medicine for the University of Oklahoma, Dr. John Zubialdi. And we are just honored that you are here to give us greetings and welcome our attendees today. So thank you so much. Yeah, Pam, thank you so much. And thank you for that, for that great introduction of this really important symposium. So I would like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, each and every one of you to the symposium today. And it's great to see how many people that we actually have with us for, for this today. Um, the, the really the purpose, the mission of the University of Oklahoma is, is to improve the health of not only all Oklahomans, but well beyond our borders. And this um, is done obviously through education, through research, um, as well as through the clinical care that we provide. And I wanna personally thank Dr. Allen and her team for this particular mission, because this, this topic today is truly a, a large unmet need of a really important population of not only Oklahomans, but beyond. And I think the, the fact that we have many participants from across the country really represents that and, and underscores that. So we're very pleased that we're able to provide this to you. Uh, Pam, I do hope that at some point <clears throat> you can actually share your personal stories with uh, the participants here because it really kind of led to the recognition of this um, of this need and how it's been put together because they're they're inspiring and so it's great to see the the fact that we uh, now have a um, a program that re can really really address this this important need so thank you i'd also like to call out dr allen as the leader of our diversity alliance task force for the college of medicine which is doing great work as we're uh, really seeking to address find and address those unmet needs um, for our students, our faculty, and for our populations uh, uh, across the state and beyond in, uh, in the areas of diversity, equity, and inclusion. You're going to hear this morning uh, after me from Dr. Salinas, who I see is also on today, about the great work that's uh, happening here and the work that we're doing to really address those needs, truly starting from a pipeline of pre-university um, pre all the way through um, university, medical school, and on into, uh, into our uh, uh, graduate uh, programs as well. So uh, again, just want to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of you for being with us today. We're really happy to have you. I, I want to actually call out, I saw in the chat earlier, uh, a uh, MS3 from University of New Mexico. I believe her name's Sajaline. Um, but I am a graduate of the University of New Mexico, so that's my alma mater. So, so go Lobos, and we're glad to have you here with us this morning. So uh, thank you all. Uh, really appreciate your being here, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Salinas. And I want to initially just give him a shout out, Dr. Salinas. You have been um, with us in the very beginnings of this program and your support and the Office of Diversity, Inclusion, uh, and community engagement. Uh, Dr. Salinas is the Assistant Dean for Diversity, Inclusion and Community Engagement. He is also uh, Associate Professor within the uh, uh, Department of Family and Preventive Medicine um, and has um, expertise within geriatrics and um, hospice and palliative care. So I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, Pam. Um, and thank you, John, uh, Dr. Zubialdi for uh, remaining steadfast in our efforts to promote uh, the educational gaps and, and identify them and do the best we can. Uh, and, and again, um, I just have a few words. I think Pam and Dr. Zubialdi has already, uh, have already really talked about why this symposium is important. Um, I really want to thank Pam and her team for putting this symposium together. Uh, she has remained steadfast uh, throughout this pandemic to make sure that these knowledge gaps are addressed and, and we address them uh, by providing space, learning space where this can occur. Um, but it's also important to acknowledge uh, others who have played an important role in making this happen. And that is Myrna Page and her team in our Office of Continuing Professional 
education. Uh, they have worked tremendously along with Dr. Pam Allen to make this happen. Now, this is an important event, uh, an event that hopes to bring together national and uh, international people together, educators to help us learn in terms of how can we do better in delivering healthcare needs, um, particularly to those people who experience different skin conditions and ailments um, in the community. So we, we have to continue to do better. And the way we do that is by sponsoring events like this that bring new information. And as Pam was talking about earlier, we, we have to continue to be willing to grow and develop and, and educate ourselves. So for that, um, I'm very honored to be part of this morning's presentation. Um, a little later today, you're gonna hear uh, from a group of panelists that will talk about why diversity matters in medical education and why is it that we have to continue to look at the change of demographics and address the healthcare needs of the community better. Um, so I'm very excited to hear from our panelists as well in terms of what are the things that we can do, uh, going back to Dr. Zubialdi's comments of creating pathway programs for those folks that aspire to uh, enter medicine as a calling. So with that, um, I wanna thank everyone for being here on this Friday morning and afternoon later today, and I'll see you later today as well and enjoy today's symposium. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Salinas. Thank you, Dr. Zubialdi.